Welcome into this special basketball edition of Sports Time, where we'll walk you through all of the events from Buzz Williams' departure as the head basketball coach of Marquette, all the way up to the hiring of the new coach today. Plus, we have all the latest from NCAA College Basketball Tournament. So don't touch that dial just yet. Sports Time starts right now. Welcome to Sports Time. I'm Grant Becker with your second and hopefully not last episode for this semester. And I'm Brian Foley. We have a show jam-packed with Marquette basketball news and highlights from the NCAA tournament, so let's not waste any time. Last Monday, Shaka Watch was in full effect on campus early in the afternoon. It was reported that the VCU head coach Shaka Smart was very close to a deal with Marquette. As the day went on, the reports became more and more serious. It was eventually reported that MU was having a press conference to announce the new head coach later that evening. But then Jeff Goodman of ESPN tweeted that no deal was close to being done. After a couple of days without any new real information, it came out Thursday night that Smart had officially pulled his name out of the running for the head coach position. That same Thursday, however, interim athletic director Bill Cords held a press conference. I'm going to be here till about this time next year. So uh, I, they thought that that would be a good thing to do, given that a new president comes on board and, and he's you know, looking for a provost. And there's a lot of things that he's going to need to do. And so we thought it would be good for him not to have to have a concern about that for about a year. But I'll tell you, well, we're not a stepping stone. And um, I, th I think there was one time where you might say that, but I don't think we are now. Um, I, you know, always look for coaches to stay. That being said, uh, we're going to find the best possible coach we can. We feel that we have everything in place in terms of support and facilities to make sure that that, that person has a, a chance to do what we all want to do, and that's get back to the Final Four and win a national championship. That's our vision. The, the program is the strongest it's ever been. I mean, solid, base, foundation, support, everything. And so, therefore, our pool is good. It is stronger and better than, than by far, than we have. Uh, uh, we're we're, we're going to have an opportunity to find the, the best possible coach we can find. We think we have a really good program, and it's very attractive. And so we're going to go at the pace that we feel is the best for us to get the best person. Oh, I think we've, got a high, we've got a pretty high level of interest. I, uh, I'm very sad, I'm very happy with that. We all have. You know, we, you have to be careful in this process. You have to be sensitive to the people involved in the process. Uh, and uh, t timing is important, but uh, you, you really have to, do your, you, you have to do your due diligence and make sure that there's, this is absolutely the best person. One of the things that we really wanted to make sure of is that our players had the same routine every day. And uh, Coach Wainwright's doing that. Uh, he's a uh, Coach Wainwright is a uh, he's a wonderful man, and he's he's doing a great. Kids really like him, and he's he's making sure that uh, he's a, a, a source for them, and he's also making sure they get the work in that they need, and our, as well as our strength and conditioning coach Todd Smith. Tennessee head coach Quanzo Martin interview with Marquette on Sunday afternoon and was believed to be the top candidate for the job until he removed his name from the running late last night. Martin was originally named as a mystery candidate while his team was still playing in the NCAA tournament. He led the Tennessee Volunteers to a Sweet 16 this season after finishing his, season, his last two seasons in the NIT. However, Martin did not pick up a win against a top 25 team this season. Today, Marquette named Steve Wojciechowski as the new men's basketball head coach. Wojciechowski emerged as a potential candidate on Sunday and interviewed with Marquette officials just yesterday. Wojciechowski has been an assistant head coach at Duke since 2008 and won two Olympic gold medals as an assistant to coach Mike Krzyzewski. Wojciechowski is considered to be an important cog in the Duke recruiting system. Let's take a look at what the players think about the signing. I've been waiting to see who we were going to get, and now he's finally here, so I'm excited. I haven't smiled in a long time. Crazy right now. I'm just real excited. You know, 
I really didn't know too much about him. I knew he was assistant for Coach K for a long time, but just like, I didn't know he was an All-American. That's just great. He's a point guard, so I, he could teach me a lot. Then he worked with so many NBA pros, LeBron James, Chris Paul, like uh, many many point guards that I look up to. He, he has coached and worked out with, and also like, how he gets out with the players and work out, and he's a gym rat just like me. So I feel like we're gonna have a great, great bond and great relationship. I'm excited for our new coach, Coach Wojo, and I'm excited what he brings to the table. He knows his stuff. You know, he's worked with some of the best, like they mentioned, LeBron, Kobe, Dwayne Wade, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, he he can teach us some things. We can learn a lot from him, and so I'm just gonna trust him. You know, I have no choice. He is the head coach, and I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, I'm real excited. Um, can't wait to see what he has to offer, and you know, with all the with all the great post players I've gone through Duke, um, I think I think it's going to help me a lot. It'll help the program. He's coached under one of the greats, and uh, I think we'll get back to what we usually do, and that's winning. And just we just need to rebuild. Not too many people win national championship. You know, we haven't won a national championship since 1977, and he's been under Coach K for 15 15 years. So you know, Coach K, what he's been under him so long, so, like it rubs off on him, and hopefully he could bring that that win in here and we continue the tradition to win. Brian, what do you think about the signing of Coach Wojciechowski? I think it's a great hire. He, he's played at Duke for five years from 94 to 98 and coached at Duke for the next 15 years. So he's been under uh, Coach K, who runs a great program for the last 20 years. Also, he's been known as a real defensive guy. He won uh, when he was at Duke. In 1998, he won National Player, Defensive Player of the Year. And so that fits Marquette's system as a hard-nosed team, and he brings that tough mentality that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. My one concern, though, is that while he has a great reputation as a recruiter, uh, he, I kind of think that Duke and Coach K kind of recruit themselves a little bit. And so I'm not sure when he's going up against, like in state, up against a great program like Wisconsin, if he'll be able to have that same su success. But I'm looking forward to what he brings to the table. And I think he's a good hire. How about you? I agree, Brian. You know, uh, I think you bring a, a good point in that he's been at Duke for the last 20 years, and he's been a part of that winning culture. He's won two national titles, and he's also won two gold medals for the U.S. national team uh, at the Olympics. And so he, he brings in this culture of winning, and he has great pedigree, so that's a nice start. Um, additionally, he's been a big part of their recruiting process, and this team has recruited Jabari Parker, Austin Rivers, Kyrie Irving, uh, this year's top recruit in Jaheel Okafor, a top five recruit, Tyus Jones this year, uh, all the Plumleys. Um, so in the last five years since he's been named the associate head coach, they've brought in some absolutely incredible recruits, so that's nice. Um, my biggest concern is just that he's never been a head coach at any level. So um, since he re like left Duke uh, from playing, he played one year overseas, and he came back and coached, and he has been an assistant coach ever since then. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see him transition to being a head coach because we genuinely have no idea what his success level will be, uh, but I expect great things out of this hiring. So. When we come back, we are sticking with college basketball but we are switching over to the NCAA tournament. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Sports Time. I'm Brian Foley. Moving forward with college basketball, let's take a broader look at the picture. That's right, Brian. We're talking about the NCAA tournament, which was dwindled down to just four, the final four this past weekend. Now let's discuss how we got here. Let's start with the Cinderella team, the Dayton Flyers, an 11 seed in the South region. They started off their miracle run with a win over Ohio State in the first game of the tournament then proceeded to uh, beat Syracuse and Stanford. So they're looking forward to a, a matchup in, against Florida in the Elite Eight. They're led by Jordan Siebert, so they've, they've had an exciting run in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another, um, I mean, I guess you could consider Kentucky somewhat of a Cinderella run. Even though they're as talented as any team gets, uh, they started off the tournament as an eight seed, and not too many people expected them to get as far as they've gotten, especially considering the fact that they not only had to play a number one seed who hadn't lost all year in Wichita State, uh, as well as a uh, Final Four team last year in Michigan and another Final Four team last year and the National Champions in Louisville, who many people expected to return to that stage. They've really surprised some teams this year in the tournament. Uh, in the East region, I'm looking at the UConn Huskies, the seventh seed. Shabazz is going hero ball for them right now. He's, he's doing it all for them. Uh, they, they had a thriller in overtime against St. Joe's, won 89-81, then proceeded to beat the two seed from the Big East, Villanova, and then Iowa State as a three seed in the Sweet 16. So they, had a, they have a great matchup with Michigan State in the Elite Eight. You know, Wisconsin's made a nice run, too. They've looked very strong in all their matchups with Frank Kaminsky leading them all the way to the Final Four. So it should be fun to watch them. So now let's take a look at these teams that are left. Who do you think is going to make it to the, final, uh, to the national championship game and then win it from there? Uh, right now I'm looking at the Florida-UConn the Florida game. Uh, I'm, I'm picking Florida right now. Wilbekin, he's been playing great offense and defense. Michael Frazier, the third, is hitting threes for them. He's, he's just splashing. It's, he's made a nice recovery in this tournament. And Patrick Young just corralling every board right now. 
problem with UConn is uh, that they kind of Shabazz and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I think Florida will be able to shut, shut him down. Yeah, I've got uh, Shabazz Napier doing Kemba Walker all over again as he has been this whole tournament. So I'm looking for UConn to win that game and continue this miracle run that they've made. They are the last team that beat Florida all the way back and uh, before conference play had even started. Uh, what do you have on the other side? Uh, in the Wisconsin-Kentucky Kentucky game, I have uh, Wisconsin. They're, they're too experienced. Frank Kaminsky is balling right now. I, I, th I think the Harrison Twins, while they're playing great now, I, I remember the whole regular season where they kind of stunk up the joint. So I, I, I think the, the Bo Ryan experience will be able to and their defense will be able to lock down those guards. I think it really hurts Kentucky that Willie Cauley-Stein is out, and with the way Frank Kaminsky's been playing, it's going to be hard to stop him without their big guy inside. But uh, with Julius Randle, the way the Harrison Twins have been playing, and all the talent that lies in these freshmen, the fact that they've put their season together and they're doing what they can do, now we see why they were the number one team at the beginning of the season, and they're playing like it now. So I've got them making it into the championship game, and if they play the way they've been playing, I think it's really, really hard to stop them. So. Well, who do you have in the final? Uh, in my finals, I have Florida over Wisconsin. Their defense too good. I think Billy Donovan's uh, national championship experience is too much. Bo Ryan's, this is first time for us, so I'm not sure uh, he'll be able to go up against uh, Billy Donovan. All right, I see you, Brian. Uh, well, that's all we have for you tonight. For my co-host, Brian Foley, I'm Grant Becker. Thanks for watching Sports Time, and we truly do appreciate your continued support through these understaffed times. Have a wonderful and safe night, Marquette.